Hey there everyone and welcome to Ants Reptile Colony. I'm sure at some point in our lives we all thought about how snakes manage to move around without any legs. And if asked this question, most people will respond, well, they slither. And of course this isn't wrong by any means, but there's a lot more to it than that. So stay tuned as we find out more. So in this video we'll be covering snake locomotion. We'll be looking at the four main types of locomotion found in snakes, but be sure to stay tuned till the end where we cover two bonus methods. But before we get into the main methods, there are some things that play a key role in the movement of snakes across all these methods. One of these things is the scales. Scales play a very important role in snake locomotion because if you've noticed or ever touched a snake before, the snake scales feel very smooth in one direction, but very rough in the opposite direction. And this can be seen or felt extremely well in the belly scales, in the ventral scales, because they are nice wide, broad scales, which give the snake a good grip. So getting into the four types, we've got the serpentine or lateral undulation, side winding or crotaline, the rectilinear, as well as the concertina mode of locomotion. Starting with the most simplest one, and that is the serpentine, and it is the typical mode of locomotion that you associate with the snake, the one where they kind of move around in these undulating S-bends. And this is achieved by moving its body from side to side, making contact with the ground on the, each bend, which thus overall propels the snake in a forward direction. In fact, the snake pushes sideways at the point where the body bends or makes contact with the ground there, and all the lots of sideways motions or sideways pushing results in the snake moving forward. So, pretty simple. The next mode of locomotion or method of locomotion is known as the sidewinding or crotaline method of locomotion. It is similar to the lateral undulation or the serpentine locomotion in that it still involves lateral undulation. Except in these undulations, parts of the body are lifted up off the ground where only the bends are in contact with the ground. It's almost like a walking motion except with you know rounded S-shaped bends. This method is often used on very loose substrate to provide propulsion as well as on a very hot substrate in order to minimize the contact of the skin with the hot surface, thus decreasing the risk of burn. This motion is typically exhibited by the side winding rattlesnake as well as the horned adder. Constantina locomotion is to be one of the most interesting and that is because it always involves having an anchor point. This method is often used to climb up trees, smooth surfaces or to traverse tunnels. This is when they wrap themselves around a smooth vertical object, such as a smooth tree or a pole. They then anchor their bodies at the bottom, moving the rest of their body upwards, anchoring again, and then pulling the rest of the body up to meet their anchoring and so forth. And slowly but surely they make their way up the tree or the smooth surface. And when traversing in a tunnel, the force is then pushed outwards as opposed to inwards but the, mo the general motion is still the same. They anchor at the, into the tunnel by pushing outwards, then they send the rest of the body forward, form a new anchor at the front, bring in their tail and the rest of the body to meet there, anchor again, and so forth. So there's always this stretching and collecting and stretching and collecting motion, pretty much like a concertina. But if the smooth tunnel or the tunnel is too narrow to allow for concertina locomotion, then you need a new type of locomotion, and that's where the rectilinear type of locomotion comes in. And it is completely different from the three previously mentioned types of locomotion. This is because it involves no sideways movement or lateral undulations whatsoever. The body remains in a straight line. Specialized muscles move the ventral scales each independently while the spine remains still, as well as keeping it in line, so it moves in a complete straight line. The flexible skin allows the scales to move independently one after the other, giving the snake the look of a crawling, even a gliding type motion, because the top half of the snake remains still while the bottom half does all the moving. Snakes such as boas, pythons, and puff adders often exhibit this type of locomotion, as well as many of the fossorial or burrowing species of snake. But there is always new research being conducted and thus new methods of locomotion being described. And these are just four of the main broad categories. In fact, there is one study, and the link will be in the, in the description below, that says that there are 11 distinct forms of snake locomotion. If you're interested on that, you can read it in the link below. And if you've made it this far into the video, well done, you are now about to get the two, that's four, the two bonus features or bonus modes of locomotion. Some you may have expected, others perhaps not. And first up we've got the slide push. 
it's a kind of a sidewinding meets serpentine or lateral undulation type of combination. And this is where the snake uses large, vigorous lateral undulations of the body. It's often used on smooth surfaces, and although the undulations are vigorous and wide, there is enough downward force to propel the snake ever so slowly forward. They really look kind of funny when they do this. I'm sure I've got a video playing somewhere. The final method of locomotion, and if you haven't guessed already, it's flying. Yes, flying. But it's actually, in truth, more like gliding. That doesn't sound nearly as cool as flying, so we're going with flying. So some arboreal snake, such as the flying snake found in Southeast Asia, see, they don't call it the gliding snake, is able to glide great distances from tree to tree. First, they go and they ready themselves at the edge of the branch. Then, all of a sudden, they shoot out into the air, taking a leap when they start undulating their bodies, flattening out their ribs to try and give them a greater surface area. The undulating motion actually helps control where the snake wants to go. In fact, it's so effective in gliding from one tree to another, they are able to cover hundreds of meters using this method. They can do this as a means of pursuit for prey, or as a means to escape predators. Because, you know, no one wants to get eaten by a predator, so they got to make a break for it and get out as quick as possible. And speaking of out... So thanks for watching everyone, it's greatly appreciated. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't done so already, drop a comment below as it's always great to hear from you. And if you want, click on the video on screen because this is the video that YouTube thinks you should watch next. And remember, it's never too late to learn and I'll catch you in the next one.